Hello and welcome to this introduction to a series of tutorials focusing on how to construct simple logic gate programs using nothing but your Arduino, the serial monitor, and some code. In this series of tutorials, we'll be going step by step through the idea stage, the design phase, all the way to implementing our design in code. We there will be certain steps that if you were building a really sophisticated program that you'd have to include that we won't necessarily worry with. But as far as building something a little more sophisticated than just blinking an LED or um, turning a potentiometer, we'll be doing something a little bit much more sophisticated than that. So, <laughs> so and that's where the value in this series lies is. It's helpful to get a sense at least one time of how one thinks through the steps involved in constructing a piece of code before actually just jumping right in. Sometimes I do that. I do this freeform coding where I don't really even have an idea. I just let it be a stream of consciousness. But most of the time, that doesn't work out too well. In most cases, one needs to think before they type. And that's what this series of tutorials will focus on is the thought involved in constructing any program of even moderate sophistication. So and in order to use to go through those steps, we'll be constructing simple little programs for AND gates, OR gates, NOT gates, even the other more fancy NANs and NORs, XORs and XNOR, and even one that folks not familiar with deductive logic would probably not expect, probably won't expect, will even be constructing a simple little program to simulate the behavior of the conditional statement, the if then. People are familiar with the if then in terms of programming construct in the Arduino environment, but if then has an actual logical structure and understanding that structure actually helps a tremendous amount in terms of understanding how to code with that structure so we'll be building a little gate to simulate that sort of behavior to gain a sense of what these sorts of programs will look like here's one of them it is just an AND gate simulation or emulation whichever way you want to describe a program but and it's really simple but it contains elements that even more advanced programs will have. Namely, every program has variables. Never going to see one really. You may encounter a few that don't, but most of them are going to have at least one or two global and local, uh, local variables. It'll have function prototypes, which that may or may not be familiar to some people watching the series of tutorials, but by the end of the series, it will be. It'll even have of welcome messages and messages that communicate any special instructions to the user that a lot of times it's really helpful to let a user know up front if there's any special settings they need to place their serial monitor in or any special settings they need to place their computer in before interacting with a particular piece of code. It's, it's a lot nicer to give them more information than they need than not enough. So it has that. These programs will also have um, little specially created input functions of pulling input from the serial monitor entered by the user and then doing something with that input that matters, that's actually val valuable. Granted, it's going to be in the form of single character inputs, which is really, really simple. But at the same time, these these sorts of functions are where retrieving input and serial data or any sort of data, they all begin somewhere. This is the beginning of serial input. And next, it, it'll, it'll have the control structure needed for not just logic gate programs, but any sort of gameplay program, a simple gameplay program, and even the much sophisticated programs Always ask the user, do they want to play again, or do they want to restart, or do they want to try back at the level they didn't make it through. <laughs> and that sort of control structure is 
Once again, it's simple, but the Arduino has its own little special challenges and gotchas and ways to make snafus if you're not aware of them. We'll be going through many of those. And it has, like I mentioned just a few seconds ago, it'll have special purpose functions to get the input, and it'll be cleaned up. And then, of course, it'll have a special function totally dedicated to dealing with the logical test involved in any sort of gate that you're dealing with. Like an AND requires a particular sort of test, or is it requires a different sort of test, etc., etc. To gain, now that we've get, gained a sense of the overall layout of these programs, that to see how they actually function with a user interacting with them, all one has to do, we can upload this code. and open our serial monitor and we'll get a welcome message and the instruction to make sure our serial monitor is on no line ending setting which it is and the next stage is we'll be prompted to enter a value t for true f for false and for those not familiar with the behavior of an AND gate whenever both of its inputs are true its output should be true otherwise its output should be false so the very first option is let's just check that. Say for the first input, we'll set it to true. And notice we get visual feedback that yes, we just set it to true. We can set the second one to true. And then the output should be true, and it is. Then we get our prompt. Do you want to play again or run this gate program again? Well, yes. Let's go through the three other possibilities. That, well, our first input could be false. Enter F for false. The second one could be true. Enter T for true. The output should be false, and it is. Now, let's, yes, we want to go again. So, the first input, let's vary it now. The first one was false last time, so let's go true this time. False the second time. And the output is false. And then the final stage well do we want to play again yes we need to run it one more time to exhaust all the possible truth value combinations so let's enter set the first value to false second value to false the output should definitely be false and it is now we have gone through all four of the possibilities so we can say no we don't want to play again and thanks for playing, see ya, and we know, get a message that the program has terminated or it has ended. Well, in the context of the Arduino, it's been kicked off into a particular style of infinite loop. But for all purposes, outward behavior, program is ended. So that's just a quick preview of the basic functionality of these programs. Now, one might say, well, what about, where's the chrome? Where's the show, the go? The noise, all the fancy things that the Arduino prototyping platform or most any microcontroller platform is known for. Well, all of that can be added to these simple programs. And if viewers are interested in it, I'll be more than happy to show how to wrap this, wrap this little core functionality of this program with buttons that a user can enter for, to enter the inputs and have LED feedback. And rather than serial monitor feedback, or you could have LED feedback and then LCD feedback, as well as you could give this program a voice, you could wrap it in a fancy processing graphical interface, or a Python graphical interface, etc., etc. The road to how much you can chrome a little basic program like this out is only limited by your imagination. You can have servos, whatever you want to attach and hang off of your Arduino, you can do that. You can have one of the neatest and awesomest logic gate programs imaginable. So don't be don't be dissuaded thinking, oh, it's just the old, you know, suspiciously boring looking serial monitor. <laughs> that we all have to start somewhere and every program has an origin. And the origin of most of them is some serial or monitor interface. Then until you get that right, 
you just you can learn it and you can copy and paste bits and pieces of the code that other people have generated and take a library and you know and shoehorn that into your code and come up with something really sophisticated really quickly but the ultimate purpose if you want to go further than just duplicating the code of others you need to understand the process involved in building something simple first so that's what the series of tutorials will emphasize at least the early parts of the series will we can do chrome and show and blow and go and all that stuff later down the road but if any of this sounds appealing which i hope it does i i love these little programs they're the sorts of things that got me interested in programming in the first place so i hope you find them interesting too and stay tuned check out the next video in the series